Making Christmas jammies for your family is not as hard as it seems. Every Christmas morning for as long as I can remember, our family tradition was to wake up and gather around the tree in Christmas pajamas, and the last several years, they have been coordinating. This year, I haven't been as good at making garments for the kids, so I thought it would be really nice to pick up a pattern that encompasses all the family members and get some coordinating fabric and go for it. Now this may seem overwhelming, but it really just took me a few days, and with some tips under your belt, you can easily do it too. We all know every kid has a different personality, so I tried to tailor these to my kids specifically, and the littlest one is obsessed with cars, but my daughter, mm, she's not as obsessed. So in comes two co different coordinating fabrics, and we're good. So here we enter into how I made these super quick. You will need the pattern in two sizes if you plan for an adult and a child. I was only making pajamas for myself, so I cut my size small from the adult pattern, and then I traced the pattern to be able to make them for all of my kids. I have three kids, and they are three different sizes. Size 3, 4, size 5, 6, and size 7, 8. First, I began by tracing three different sizes from the same pattern for my three kids. This was not very difficult at all and should be easy with a roll of tracing paper and a pencil. I included all lines and occasionally rolled back the paper to make sure I was picking up all the notches and circles. Some pattern pieces are labeled for a specific size so no tracing needed here. I also used a ruler when I needed, labeled the size and pattern piece accordingly, and made sure to include the grain line. Some pattern pieces are easy to fold under at the size line for each size. In this case, no tracing is needed at all. You just simply fold back the line that you need. Now let's talk about pattern matching briefly. I wasn't striving for perfection, but I did try to use the bold red line to line up pattern pieces. It's very useful to find a line in your plaid fabric that is very prominent that you can use to match pattern pieces. I would use this line as the base for many pattern pieces. You can also make sure your notches are on the same line and on each pattern piece. You can also use other pattern pieces that are already cut and need a mirror image to help you cut out the next piece, which that can be really useful. When matching the yoke piece to the back bodice, I sacrificed the pleat and realized it wouldn't end up matching at all, but I matched the outer edge as well. When matching the yoke shoulder to the front bodice shoulder, I tried to place the front bodice piece in an area that would match well at the shoulders and the side seam. Here is a prime example of how I've created an assembly line to construct this pattern for four people. Here I am fusing all the interfacing required. I am working on the pockets here as well. Completing one step at a time for each of the four garments in order to avoid switching from my machine to my ironing board multiple unnecessary times. I attach the pockets to the bodice for all four. Then you place interfacing and reinforcement stitching to be able to cut into the midline of your bodice. The pleat is very easy to make in the back bodice piece. Now you set your machine to basting and baste all four. Remember how I talked about matching the outer edges of the yoke to the back bodice piece and not worrying about the pleat? Well you can see how this worked out here. This is the second yoke piece and you will iron the seam allowance down at the shoulder. After attaching both yoke pieces to the back bodice, I finished the seams even though they will be covered later. Look at how great that yoke matches the dominant red lines on the back bodice piece and on the outside of the seam. When attaching the front bodice to the yoke back bodice piece, you can see I tried to do my best to match the dominant red lines as I did when I was cutting out the fabric. Then I press the seams towards the yoke. For this step, you're supposed to hand stitch the yoke piece, but I said to myself, do I want to hand stitch eight seams? Nope. So I pulled out my trusty stitch witchery and it takes about five seconds to sandwich that in between the seams and iron it in place. Just a quick little shortcut. It is very satisfying to stitch all the facings at once and it really helps to move the pattern along. I labeled them all and stitched the one with and without interfacing. Clipping into the seam before ironing up the seam allowances on the interface facing was very helpful for a smooth fold. When attaching the uninterfaced facing to the bodice, it seems as though you're warping it a bit to fit, but this is normal. Follow through with the pictures in the pattern, you'll realize it's correct. I pinned them all and stitched them all at the same time. 
For many of the curved seams in this pattern, I made sure to clip the seams, but I also graded the seam allowances, which is basically when you cut the seam that will be on the inside a little bit shorter. I also made sure to cut triangles where it was needed so the excess fabric inside the curve wouldn't add bulk. When stitching interface facing to the uninterfaced one, I made sure all the seams matched well and I cut and graded the seam again. Then you will understitch, which helps the interface facing turn to the inside of the garment very nicely. Now here comes the best part. I didn't hand stitch on the inside. I top stitched just outside the seam onto the actual facing on the outside and made sure to catch the interface faced edge on the inside. And I did this by placing many pins on the inside and sewing over them very, very slowly, making sure the heads of the pins were out of the way of my presser foot. You will cross over the front facing according to the instructions and your preference, and then you secure it on the inside and top stitch on the outside. And then you say hi to your kitty that invades your space every single day. <laughs> to add the sleeves and complete the underarm seam, I stitched the seam allowance on my sewing machine and then I used the serger to finish the seams. To hem the top, I simply finished the whole entire length of the bottom with my serger and simply ironed the stitch up which is about a quarter or three eighths of an inch. I decided this because my whole family has rather long torsos and this would be beneficial in avoiding a top that was too short. When attaching the cuff, I still followed the assembly line method. I stitched the seam and then folded the cuff at the fold line to the inside. Instead of hand sewing this, I did what I did with the facing. I just pinned vigorously and top stitched on the outside just outside the seam on the actual cuff, being sure to catch the inside of the cuff that has been overlapped by an eighth of an inch over the seam attaching the cuff to the sleeve. Now we move on to the pants. You need to make sure when you first sew the inseam that you are attaching the front piece to the back piece and not the back to the back or the front to the front. Ask me how I know this. Then you sew the crotch seam and then the side seams. And I have finished all of these seams with my serger as I went along. Now you need to fold over the top to the inside and tuck in about a quarter of an inch to protect the raw edge, leaving enough room for your one inch elastic. Measure each person by wrapping the elastic around their body where the pants will sit and then add about an inch. Then you will be using a safety pin, for instance, to pass the elastic through. I then tried it on each person to make sure it fit before permanently stitching the elastic and stitching the section of the waistband closed. I tried the pants on each person to determine the hem and folded it up twice and top stitched and voila, you're done! Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I hope you enjoyed these tips and tricks. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. If you would like to check out more from my Instagram or YouTube channel, feel free to follow me on Instagram and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hit the notification bell so you can be notified when I have another video. Make sure you check out this pattern from McCall Pattern Company. It's very useful to make pajamas for your entire family. I will also place a link in my blog and on my YouTube channel for the fabric I used for all the pairs of pajamas. Happy holidays, everyone, and I can't wait to see what you create.